Ravindra Gupta joins us from Boston and he is a professor of clinical microbiology at the University of Cambridge who actually led the treatment for this patient. Thanks so much for coming on the show, uh, Dr. Ravindra. First of all, just to clarify, um, can we say for sure that this patient has been cured of HIV? Well, the um, data show that uh, this um, individual has been off antiretroviral therapy now for an unprecedented, unprecedented period of time, which is now 30 months or two and a half years. Normally, if you stop somebody's HIV treatment, the virus would come back within about two to four weeks, uh, within a month. So uh, just the duration itself suggests that there is uh, no active HIV. But we've gone even further than that. We've been testing not only blood, but different tissues, such as lymph nodes, um, gut, um, and also uh, semen, and in addition, fluid around the brain, which often harbors HIV. And none of these has any evidence of any active HIV. What we have found is a little bit of um, fossilized HIV DNA, which we would expect, um, because of course, it's impossible to clear um, every trace of, 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 of HIV genetic material theoretically. So we were not surprised when we saw little traces of, of what we call fossils. So we could say he has, he has been cured? Yes, we are, we are almost certain that this is a cure. Um, and and uh, and we will be reducing the uh, frequency of the monitoring of this individual um, uh, because we don't think the virus is going to be coming back. Cool. Congratulations cool. Uh, Congra to you, you you're the scientist that, that led the, the research and, of course, uh, to the patient, um, Adam. Um, but help us understand, to, to lay people like myself and other viewers who, who are not experts, what exactly did you do? So it all relies on actually um, something we observed in nature, as all um, uh, scientific achievements uh, start out, really. Uh, it was known for a while that there are certain individuals who have um, a mutation in, a, in the gene CCR5. And this is a, uh, encodes a protein that sits on our white blood cells, and HIV needs this protein to get inside the cell. Now, some people have that mutation, and they become resistant to HIV infection. They can't really be infected very easily or even at all. And so that gave the idea for um, uh, a stem cell transplant of, of using cells from these individuals who are resistant and transplanting them into um, a person who uh, required a transplant for whatever reason, with, uh, blood cancer, for example, um, who also had HIV. So you can then treat two diseases with one transplant, essentially. And Dr. Ravinda, <laughs> what does this mean then for other people living with HIV, let's say, you know, in sub-Saharan African countries? So this is really a first step um, to achieving a, a cure for all. Unfortunately, this is going to take um, uh, some years because the, the closest idea we have uh, in terms of how to follow these cases up is really to, do, to use some uh, gene therapy techniques in order to um, cause mutations that are similar to the naturally occurring ones, but that requires um, significant technology and um, and safety testing before uh, it can be scaled up. So there is there. What this is is a proof of principle that that targeting the CCR5 uh, gene is a bona fide way of, of potentially achieving cure. And how affordable would this be um, to scale? I mean, you mentioned the the technology and the safety testing. Yes, every every new. Um, intervention comes in very expensive. Antiretrovirals are a very good example. Some of them cost $10,000 a year at one stage, even more. Um, and now we can provide antiretrovirals for $100 a year or even $80 a year um, using much better and more potent drugs. So I think the economics of um, whatever interventions um, emerge um, will follow the same pattern. Initially, they will be expensive and only for a few but eventually, um, these will become more widely available. And Dr. Ravindra, <laughs> just a doubt I have, um, just to be clear, did Adam um, Castillejo have full-blown AIDS, or was he just living with HIV? Well, yes, the, it, 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 the diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma is, is an AIDS-defining um, diagnosis in that it's a sign of um, a heavily um, uh, suppressed immune system. And um, the interesting thing here is that he was diagnosed in 2003 and for 10 years did not receive antiretrovirals. 
uh, mainly because the guidelines at the time said that people with certain CD4 counts did not need to start treatment. We now have revised those over time, but, uh, the, um, but Adam had a long period when he was not on antiretrovirals. Um, uh, and that probably contributed to developing um, Hodgkin lymphoma. So, so he, he, he did or he didn't have um, full-blown uh, AIDS? He, he, uh, it's interesting. He, he had an AIDS-defining illness, so yes, you could say that. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying. And just very quickly, how is uh, the patient himself and why did he uh, decide to speak out and uh, uh, reveal his identity? Um, he's very, he's uh, well at the moment. Obviously, there have been, um, needs to see doctors um, relatively frequently because he's a transplant recipient, um, but that's going uh, very well. And of course, he um, he wanted to um, become a um, an advocate for, for HIV to try and reduce stigma of this disease um, and to um, and to and to see what he could give back as a result of being um, uh, relatively fortunate to have cleared um, not only cancer but HIV itself. So I think he wants to. Um, certainly give back to society um, uh, through his actions. And just very quickly, do you see light at the end of the tunnel for people living with a full-blown HIV AIDS? Well, there is because, of course, antiretrovirals are already available. We know that uh, if you start them earlier, you uh, preserve your immune system and you prevent complications. Um, even if you have developed AIDS uh, because of the delayed diagnosis, um, many patients uh, then still go on to live um, uh, normal lifespans. Okay. We'll have to leave it there. We've run out of time. Dr. Ravindra, thank you very much indeed for coming on the program. Such a pleasure and it's great to end with such good news here on the News Out on TRT World. Thank you so much for your company. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.